Hello and welcome in. Are you one of these AI persons who's trying to figure out what the next big thing will be? We're not just talking about a little tiny algorithmic twitch or another layer or another methodology, but the fundamental steps that are the sort that will totally transform the space. If so, you're probably already aware of how artificial intelligence, specifically the energy-based neural networks, that's the restricted Boltzmann machine, an entire deep learning swathe of things, is based on statistical physics. You may or may not have had a chance to teach yourself the requisite stat phys. We want to shorten these phrases a little bit. So what we're going to do in this video series is go all the way back to the genesis of the neural networks that use the energy-based approach. That would be the little hot field neural network. And we're looking for not just the key equations. We'll teach ourselves that over time. Absolutely, we will. But what we're after are the insights. What was that breakthrough moment, that aha genius that made it possible to have the kind of emergence of the next major step forward? So in today's vid, we're going to go to the little hot field neural network. We're going to look at how it compares with the icing model in statistical physics. We're also looking at the Boltzmann machine at the same time because the Boltzmann machine is the same as the little hot field neural network with a very interesting twist allowing for latent variables. That's a different discussion another day. So join me. I'm Aliana J. Marvin. I am the founder and chief scientist with Themsys Incorporated for artificial intelligence equals physics. Let's move on, shall we? In order to understand deep learning, we really need to understand the Boltzmann machine. And to do that, we need to understand its predecessor neural network, the hop field, or more appropriately, the little hop field neural network. Now, both of these are based on statistical mechanics. Specifically, they're based on the icing model, which is a fundamental method in statistical mechanics. So in this vid, we're going to cover three things. First, we're going to have a very quick and not at all in-depth review of the icing model, just enough to get a little sense of familiarity or comfort. Second, we're going to take a quick, quick look at the Boltzmann machine, not as a neural network, but as an energy equation and how it relates to the icing model. And third, we're going to make the correlation between these two. Specifically, what we are after is what was the insight that first William Little and then John Hopfield had in creating their neural network that was a fundamental advance and enabled really the, the entire field of energy-based neural networks to exist. We want that insight because it's the first insight that we need in tracing our way through this yellow brick road of various insights that have led us to where we are now. And the reason for doing that is that the more clearly we understand what's led us to our current point, the more we can clearly make a guess or identify at least the general area of where our next evolutions are going to come. So let's take a quick look at the icing model. In this kind of a model, we're presuming that you have some sort of a space, a volume, and that it's filled with little particles, and all these particles are in the nature of most statistical physics models. They are massless, and they are volumeless. So they're just point particles in space. However, they can be in various energy states and they can interact with each other. Now, when we do statistical physics and we're treating a system like this, and in particular, this is appropriate for the icing model, what we're after, our key objective, is to minimize the free energy of a system. When we work with free energy, we notice that it is a combination, it's a linear combination of two terms. One is entropy and the other is enthalpy. Now, the entropy in itself is a parameter-free term. The entropy term looks like a convex bowl. That means that its bottom end is up. And this will always be true for the entropy term when you're dealing with a system that has just on and off units. When we work with entropy in a free energy minimization approach, we put a negative sign on the entropy so the bowl is actually bowl-shaped. Its rounded end is at the bottom. Now, Entropy is parameter-free. All the parameters that are available for our use are in the enthalpy term, which is 
really the energy available to the various unit, units in our system. Now there's two kinds of enthalpies that we have. One is called activation enthalpy, and that is a per unit energy. Typically we work with systems that have just two energy states. So there's, there's on and off, or active and inactive. And so the fraction of active units will be the dominant factor in how much energy you have in this active energy state. The other kind of ener energy or enthalpy that we have is interaction enthalpy, and that's based on typically pairwise interactions between units. And just as a quick refresher, I showed this in the predecessor vid on uh, the missions for, for Themesis. The icing model is very well known. It's been around for ages, and it is fundamental in statistical physics. So I'm blowing up that definition. The H is the enthalpy part of the equation, and we've got the two terms that identified. The interaction is on the left, the activation is on the right. So far, we've done a light and frisky gamble through the highest levels of statistical physics. We've identified key concepts and terms, and in particular, we've had a quick look at the icing model. What we're after right now is a contrast and compare between the icing model and the corollary that is supporting the Hopfield neural network and also the Boltzmann machine. We're going to do this strictly for the Hopfield because the energy equation for the Hopfield, the little Hopfield, neural network and the Bolson machine is the same. It's just that there's a differentiation between kinds of nodes in the Boltzmann machine. That's just a very small bit more complex, and we'll defer that to another bit. So we're going to use the Hopfield neural network as our point of reference. Now, in the Hopfield neural network, you have interactions between nodes. In the icing model, you have interactions between nodes. In the icing model, specifically, there's different mechanisms, there's different models. We'll use the mean field method, which basically says that for any given active node, it can have an interaction with the nodes that are in a sort of vicinity of it. It's going to be a scalar times the fraction of nodes that are active because that fraction will also represent the fraction of active nodes within a radius of a given node. So mean field theory, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. In the hop field and also in the Boltzmann machine. And here is the key breakthrough, here's the insight. This is what we've been waiting for with all of this discussion. So we're going to put them side by side. Icing model, you have some mechanism for determining the interaction enthalpy that if, for example, you're looking at a mean field theory, you're looking at the influence of a node within a radius or surrounding area of a given node on that central node. Hopfield boltzmann models, every interaction gets computed specifically during training and according to a training rule. And in both cases, you're minimizing free energy. You're always minimizing free energy in these models. So let's wrap this up. What we've seen is that the equation for statistical physics fundamental, robust workhorse called the Ising equation is the one that is used as the foundation for the hot field, the little hot field neural network, and also, of course, the Boltzmann machine. But it's not like it was derived from first principles. Instead, we're using statistical physics as essentially a poetic metaphor for what could happen in a neural network. And we plug it in with this reinterpretation or re-envisioning of what the weights, the connections, the interaction energies between nodes could mean. And instead of having them defined by some sort of equation, we're finding them via a free energy minimization process, but each weight can take on an individual and unique value. This is radical, this is new, this is different. And this opens up the entire field of energy-based neural networks neural networks, which has led us to today's work with deep learning. So we have a fundamental base. We have a starting point. We can look forward to the next step building on this. Thanks for joining me here with Aliana J. Marin in a YouTube series sponsored by Themesis Incorporated, where artificial intelligence equals physics. See you soon.